Hey everybody, welcome in. We are now live here with our latest events in this Rebel Caravan continuing on. This is our Lady Rebel uh, growing up in a basketball city event. Thank you so much everybody who signed up joining us here. We, uh, we're really excited for this because for the next 45 minutes or so, you're going to have the opportunity uh, to ask all of our panelists a bunch of questions, maybe win some prizes as well uh, as, as we're talking with a wide, vast array of Vegas natives, all of whom have some pretty special connections uh, here to, uh, to UNLV. So without further ado, um, let's get into it. I'm gonna introduce first our panelists who we have on today. As a reminder, you can uh, chat, hit us up in the uh, chat box. We'll kind of get all of your, your questions in if you have them, and we'll, we'll kind of hear from everybody here first. So let's just start with, I'll kind of introduce everybody one by one. We have Lindy LaRock, the Lady Rebel going into her second year as head coach, grad of Durango High School here in town, and uh, somebody who was the first ever Vegas native to be named head coach of the Lady Rebels, just named uh, Mountain West Coach of the Year this past season. So we've got Lindy here on the panel. We also have her, one of her top assistant coaches in Mia Bell, who played at Durango High School as well, and also at UNLV. So she was the first ever Vegas native to both play and coach for the Lady Rebels. So we have uh, Mia on joining us on the panel today. Of course, uh, we, we also have a couple current Lady Rebels who are both going into their sophomore seasons. A couple of Vegas natives on the roster. Jade Thomas, who is the older sister Bailey, just graduated last year. So we've got uh, Jade in it from, a, from a very uh, friendly looking outdoor. I'm not sure where Jade is, but it looks like a beautiful place to spend a nice little Tuesday here in Vegas. Uh, Jade, who was just named to the Mountain West All Freshman team and who started at Centennial High School here in town, and also Desi Young, who was just named Mountain West Freshman of the Year. Uh, she also just finished up uh, her freshman season after playing at Desert Oasis High School. And so those two will both be sophomores here for the Lady Rebs coming up in the uh, 2021 season. And we also have Sequoia Holmes. So she is, uh, she is probably the most decorated player of anybody on, on this panel as a, a former Mojave High School standout, played for the Lady Rebels back in the mid 2000s and in, into the late 2000s as well. And, uh, and she has been a pro now for over a decade. And she became the first Vegas native to play for the Las Vegas Aces back when uh, the Aces had their first season in town here in, uh, in 2018. So that's what we've got on the panel today. It is a, a group of royalty here within, uh, within the Las Vegas Hoops community. And what's so fun about this panel is I think we all know being here in town, just how special of a basketball city this is. And so, so to have so many people who grew up here to have played and been a part of the UNLV program and in, in Lindy's case, being a coach and uh, being able to be a part of this community, it, it's, it's, uh, it's pretty awesome. So while you guys get your questions ready, uh, what I'm going to first do is kind of set each of you guys up. I want to get one sort of, this is just a general sort of loaded question out of the way, but we'll, we'll get it out of the way first. I'll start with our two players because for you, Lindy, Sequoia, uh, Mia, you might take a little time, you know, comb through the memory. Here, I know you have a few more than maybe Jade and Desi. So I want to start off with this. Ask you first, Jade and Desi. Think back. Give me your most memorable moments you've had playing here in, in Las Vegas throughout your basketball career. I know that's a loaded question. A lot of great memories to choose from. But Jade, let me start with you. The floor is yours to begin. And then we'll go next to you, Desi. So did you mean like just my freshman year or like out of all my high school years? It, yeah. And from any point in your, in your Las Vegas uh, playing career, do you need a second? We can go to Desi. No, first. no, I'm ready. Okay. All so right. mine was at States in Reno. It was my sophomore year and we played Liberty and this was like a loaded team. We had, we played Dre who was at Kentucky and Ray who's at uh, Tennessee now. So great players. And we were down 10 with about a minute and a half left. And I remember I hit the um, I hit the three to end the regulation for us to tie, and then we ended up winning. So that was my most memorable because uh, I was like really nervous. I was like, oh my god, I'm gonna I'm not gonna have four state rings. I'm not gonna have two. Like this is like gonna ruin my whole career. And then when I hit the three, I was just I was just so happy. So that was definitely my most memorable moment. I think that qualifies, Jade. I think that definitely that definitely counts. All right, how about you, Desi? Um, I would have to say mine is uh, when we swept Reno. Um, that was really a memorable game. I had actually hit the game-winning layup. You know, that that was really nice. Uh, no one's ever swept Reno, Coach Lindy was telling me. So, you know, it, that would be one of my most memorable games. All right. This is probably a good time also to let you guys know that 
Lady Rebel season tickets. You can get them now, starting at just 75 bucks. How about, look at that, Matt. That's me being, you know, trying to be professional, going, you know, teeing us up for this. Uh, you can go to our website, unlbtickets.com, or give us a call, 702-739-FANS, F-A-N-S. Uh, so those are our two players currently for the Lady Rebels, some of their memories. Um, all right, Lindy, we'll go next to you. You've had some time, dig through the memories. You got to play for your dad in high school. You played with Mia, so... I wonder if yours maybe, yours maybe involves me at all, but uh, what do you got for us? Well, um, you are right. It, it does feel like ancient times. Um, man, uh, a lot of obviously some some great memories um, from high school. Uh, I know there's probably a lot of Centennial Bulldogs on here, so they may not like to hear this, but um, what was it, Mia, yeah, maybe our um, maybe my junior year or, or sophomore year in, in high school, um, the Centennials, you know, notorious uh, Christmas tournament. Um, and, and typically they just beat up on everyone. And uh, we, we, we had we had the upper hand that day. So it was a it was a great game that Italy Lucas, I was I think it was her senior year. So it was probably my junior year. Um, and uh, we, we took it to them and, and beat them on their home court. So um, I, not many teams have done that uh, before then, and I don't think they've done it much since. So um, I, I hate to kind of rub that in, in the local Bulldogs face, but uh, that, that's also a testament to the program and, and the people they are over there and, and how many great players they've had. So that would be mine. And then, of course, uh, I, I would be remiss if I didn't say, you know, coaching and in, in, my first game here as a head coach, my very, very first game, um, you know, having the UNLV on my chest, it just, it, that, that is special. And it, it's a very new memory, but, but nonetheless that I know I'm, I'm going to remember for the rest of my life. Sir, I mean, certainly it, it's what makes a place like Vegas so special. You've got great teams, great rivalry. So that's okay. Well, friendly trash talk is totally, totally acceptable. Uh, we'll go next to you, Mia, as well. I mean, not to pile on you, another Durango alum. What, uh, and you also, as we mentioned, played for UNLV as well. So a lot to choose from uh, for Mia also. Yes, um, I definitely have a lot and it's kind of hard to just pinpoint one moment. Um, but if I had to choose one, I think it would be my my senior night game here at UNLV. Um, played Reno, had a great game. We won, um, never lost to Reno in my career. So that, that had to throw that in there. But um, the reason it would be my favorite is because every person um, that I came into contact while being a player, while whether it's at Durango or here at UNLV, from our season ticket holders to my family, to um, people I would do community service with, they were at that game. And then after the game, everyone came down on the floor and it, I was just filled with emotion um, to know that that was my last time playing on uh, Cox Pavilion's home floor, but it's one I'll never forget. I have so many pictures of that and it just brings me joy just to kind of think about that moment and all the people who helped me uh, get to this point were there witnessing my last game in that arena. So that will probably be my favorite moment for sure. Absolutely. All right, Sequoia, last but certainly not least, we've given you eight minutes to comb through all your memories. Think of uh, the, most, the most memorable at, at having also, you know, played for, uh, having played for UNLV and the Las Vegas Aces as well and, and, and all of your high school experience too. So what, uh, what have you come up with here? Ooh. Um, didn't come up with much. Eight minutes was not a lot of time um, to kind of comb through, but um, I, I do one at each level. You know, I'd say at, at high school, um, playing in Vegas, uh, my first, like, standout moment would have to be my freshman year, actually. I actually, most people don't know, I didn't play varsity as a freshman um, at a school that wasn't very good, which is pretty shocking, but you know, it's our, our senior game, actually, for the seniors. At, uh, we played our rival, Cheyenne, um, and I actually got pulled up for the first time. Um, little backstory is, you know, I wanted they wanted to pull me up during the middle of the season from JV to varsity, but I, uh, I respect, respectfully declined a um, little bit, a little probably a little salty. So I'm like, nah, y'all got to wait, whatever. And then, you know, to the playoffs, to come around, um, y'all, they kind of, you know, sorely they shortly found out that they made a bad decision but let me play jv in the first place but that's another story so i got pulled up um and i had you know a double double in that game first game on varsity so kind of you know showed everybody that that's where i belong to play uh, kind of balled out or whatever so and then you know in college i would say 
Uh, ironically, again, it was my freshman season. Uh, well, there's two. I'm going to share both. But we played against North Carolina. You know, they were ranked top. You know, I, they had Ivy Lada, Orlando Larkins, all these, you know, players that you, you, you know about that have a huge history. And, you know, we were supposed to get swept out of that game like no other, you know, my freshman year. And uh, that was the game I was kind of thrown in the fire to start. Um, there was an injury to another senior player. And so, you know, I, I was able to perform. You know, I didn't really – you know, put up a huge stat line, almost a double-double, I think like nine points and probably like 10 rebounds, a couple blocks. But it was a really, really intense game. And I just I just love the atmosphere. You know, it really felt like there was a ACC competition game, you know, uh, us uh, being able to compete. So that was one. Um, also, you know, kind of beating, beating New Mexico at home for my senior night uh, when they were ranked top 25. And we weren't, you know – even in the conversation at the time. So just kind of getting out there and, and um, um, showing the Lobos a, a little something about what we do. Cause you know, it's very, very hard to play in their arena. So I was happy that we, we got the win right before having to travel, travel down there. Um, and then obviously just stepping foot on the court in, in a, base, a Las Vegas Aces uniform um, as a native playing um, in your home city being able to kind of represent, you know, everything that you you will ever want in a professional career is to play for your city. So that was just a really elating feeling. You know, it's pretty indescribable still to this day, just how I felt having family and friends watch me at the pro level, high school level, and the college level at some point. There aren't too many people who can say they, they made their coach actually pay for them not Calling them up to varsity, but Sequoia Holmes, one, <laughs> one of one of the few who has that that distinction. That, that's such an awesome story. Um, and and again, just getting started here with uh, with our panel. Again, if you want to uh, ask anybody questions here, you, you can use the little Q and A function at the bottom of your screen. And we'll get into our first one um, right now. We'll kind of go right back to you, Sequoia, since this does have to do uh, with the Aces. Antoine asks. Uh, do you feel, and I'll also, we'll have you start with this and also have uh, Lindy and Mia chime in on this as well. Antoine asks us, do you feel like the addition of the Aces here in Las Vegas has had an influence on women athletics at the collegiate level? Most definitely. Um, you know, kind of being able to grow up seeing, you know, the stage that you want to play on has a huge um, advantage to what you're working towards. You know, when I was a kid and Lindy and Mia, we didn't have that, that, that image, you know, to be able to, you know, if I grew up in LA, LA, I could always, and I, you know, went to Dominguez Hills, for example, I could always go to a Sparks game and see Candace Parker and Lisa Leslie and these girls playing and know that that's the level that I want to play with. So it's even more inspiring for um, these young athletes to be able to drive um, no more than 30 minutes, you know, to, to, to the Mandalay Bay event center and see, you know, the stage where they want to play. It helps when it comes to visualization, that's for sure. Uh, and seeing, seeing what you want to, what you want to do, being able to put a picture to that. I'll, I'll chime in on that. Um, you know, Sequoia said it great, but there's something to be said for the, the visual, um, especially for young women and young girls. And I think we're still continuing, hopefully, to see that development in the youth programs and see more young girls get into basketball and more so stay in basketball. Um, and so we've got a lot of really good youth programs, youth AU club teams, um, and then our high school ball is, is really blossoming. And so if anything, I think hopefully um, it gives a, a, another level and, and layer a sense of pride for our community um, and not just to see you know how far they can go and what they can be but then to have the access to it um, you know really adds an inspiration a motivation um, and a sense of pride to Las Vegas but then um, your own personal dreams and goals too so um, I'm hoping we continue and and I know it's building and um, we're going to continue to to reap the the benefits of it I mean I think the greatest thing is they have a great um fan following. They've created a great basketball atmosphere. And I think they've they've really gone above and beyond to attract more uh, women's basketball fans, you know, so that's why uh, we, we need to get them out to some Lady Rebel games and keep them women's basketball fans year round too. So that, that's the that's the goal. 
Mia, I'll, I'll let you uh, chime in as well uh, on this. Since you know you, I know you, and Lindy, are kind of side by side on on the bench there. What have you thought of of uh, that and having this presence now for the past uh, your three plus seasons? Yeah, I mean, I agree. I think it goes hand in hand. Um, just the growth of the game in our in our city. Um, just young girls, like Sequoia said, have an opportunity to see what's possible. I think that's one of the biggest things. When you can see something, you can believe it, and you can strive for it. So. Um, them being here only helps us and it helps our basketball community in our city. So it's, it's only a plus for sure. No doubt. And so it's certainly interesting you know, for you guys, for Sequoia, Lindy, Mia, having this after you'd gone through growing up here, playing, seeing what the scene was like, and then the, the addition and the impact of having the aces. I want to ask both uh, Desi, you first, and then, and then uh, Jade second. For you, you were both kind of budding high school stars back you know, a few years ago when the aces came to town. What was the, what did it seem like uh, for you? What, what do you remember about that time and what sort of things changed, if any, um, when, when you were playing and all of a sudden you look up and you got a WNBA team playing like 15 minutes away from home? Um, I remember my mom telling me, she was like, oh, they started an Aces team. And she was like, well, now you really got to work. You got to go outside all the time and shoot around and we need to go. So um, I just think my mom telling me that, and it just put a lot on me. Like, well, I know I want to play in the WNBA. I know there's a lot of things that I got to do. So having the WNBA team here, I think it puts a lot more on me personally. Um, like, they're right there. So, you know, if I just be a star at UNLV, you know, they might just come over and be like, hey, we want to. So having a WNBA team in Vegas is really, really nice. And it's right in Mandalay Bay, so... <laughs> I would say adding on to that, which I do agree with you, I'd say like it made us realize that it's more than just basketball and that it's more than just like a high school rivalry, rivalry because like going to the games, it's like it's not really about like who you're playing against. It's like making it there and like trying to worry about you and your team and like your growth to get there, like Desi said. So I think that it really made us realize that it's about you and you working hard to get there rather than just like, oh, who am I going to play and stuff like that? Because one day you might be playing with them. Yeah, that's uh, that's a fantastic answer. I think you guys all, I think we all, you know, having seen and watched the Aces the past few years, I think we all kind of have felt that juice, that energy that it's brought to, to the city. So, you know, that, that's all great to uh, to hear. Uh, again, we're taking all of your uh, your Q&As here. Uh, we do have, we, we are giving away prizes. I mentioned that at the start. Let's give out one uh, right now. I'm being told by the, the powers that, that be that Eric Stouth has won a UNLV Nike prize pack. So congrats uh, to you, Eric. These are pretty sweet shirts that we're, you know, we're getting to wear and you now will get, uh, get, get part of that uh, as well. Okay, so let's continue on again. Uh, we, we continue on. This is our uh, Las Vegas themed Lady Rebel Caravan event, basketball in Las Vegas. So awesome to have all of you guys on the panel right now. Um, for just kind of looking at this from like a macro big picture scale type deal here um, and, and I'll kind of start again we'll circle back to Jade and Desi that since you, you know you're two of the current players on the Lady Rebels but um, I know as as is kind of the case normally you normally start playing hoops at a pretty young age and there's certainly an environment to that and, and it's kind of it's always different for everybody so it's interesting to hear kind of your your stories and, and how you went through it but what was um, from from just the time you were young and, and how you got introduced to the sport starting with you Jade what was that introduction like for you and, and how did kind of the, the environment, uh, I know you and Desi both didn't come to Vegas until a little bit later until you started your high school careers, but what was it like to get started in the sport and, and kind of your first memories you had as you started playing in, in a community like this that is so rich with its basketball history? I would say my first memory was um like basically I was basically born in the gym like my dad was a coach so I always remember like being in the gym and like my most memorable memory when I was young was um like the cheerleaders bringing me a cake when it was my birthday and I was like oh my gosh like it was so excited and like ever since then I just like haven't really had a life that like that is different than that so that's all I grew up to know and then once it was my time to start like progressing and doing stuff by myself I I really like loved it and like Vegas is a great place for opportunity and my dad used to coach here so just like kind of like it was grown in me and like the roots so it's like really special for me to actually go here for myself and like do something for myself rather than like my dad doing it or like my sisters. Desi uh how, how about you? Um well my uncle you know I was sitting on the couch one day he was like dang Desi you you getting big and I was like what do you mean I'm getting big 
He was like, you ain't tall. And I was like, so? He was like, come on, we gonna go to the courts. So I'm sitting there and I'm fussing with him. And I'm like, I don't wanna play basketball. I can't do this. He was like, it's okay. We just gotta practice. And so then I started um, playing in middle school. I didn't start till I was about uh, 12, 13 years old. So I didn't, I didn't start too young, but so. I would just say that my uncle really pushed me to play basketball, you know, just him seeing me grow. And he was just like, yeah, you can't just be in the house all day. You got to get out and do something with that height. So I would say my uncle really pushed me to play. I love, I love how you answered that too. You could have just said uh, my uncle wanted me to play, but no, the way you said that. Great stuff, Desi. That's what we love to see. Um, I'll kind of phrase this a little bit differently just for, for you three, Lindy, uh, Mia, and, and Sequoia, just like from an influence standpoint for you guys, what was it that really – uh, drew you to the game so young and and, and kind of how did you get your your start there I'll start with start with uh, you Mia well um I started pretty late too I didn't start to middle school and um actually I think the two other uh young ladies on the call with me Lindy and Sequoia had a huge impact uh, my cousins they lived in Vegas I moved from Chicago uh, I remember my auntie talking to me about a kid who played at Sawyer Middle School and that was Lindy at the time and so just being able to go to games at the time I was really bad like I was I was really really bad but um, just seeing what was possible um, you know if you worked hard and all that stuff made a huge impact on me. And I never forget one day, it was like after one of my games on a Saturday, she brought me a newspaper article um, and it was a Sequoia. She dunked in a high school game. And I had that newspaper article in my room all throughout high school, just not that I was ever gonna dunk, but just, you know, what people say you can't do. And I got that a lot that, you know, I wasn't good enough that I wouldn't be. Uh, but what people say you can't do is actually possible if you work hard, um, you just put your head down and you just stay with it. And, you know, you have a goal in mind one of those things is just a reminder of things that's possible. And um, that's kind of how I got my start in actually. I think I said this a lot, moving to Las Vegas was one of the greatest things that ever happened to me, just because of the opportunity. You you drive around, there's courts everywhere, there's parks everywhere, um, there's basketball gyms, access. So just having that access um, to be able to play the game, you know, it, it definitely was huge for me. My turn. Go to you next, Lydia, yeah. Um, well, uh, actually, similar to Jade, um, uh, kind of, I'm a coach's kid as well. Um, my dad coached high school ball here in the, in the Valley forever. So I grew up in the gym. Um, but I think one of my earliest basketball memories and women's basketball in particular was, um, you know, some of you have probably heard this story, but I, my sister and I used to be ball girls uh, during the Mountain West conference tournament. Uh, for the men and more so for the women. And we love the women's games because they were in the afternoon and we got to miss school. Um, and so that was the best part. And those were, that was, you know, the early 2000s, the late 90s, early 2000s. That was Linda Froelich. That was Becky Hammond playing for Colorado State. Um, and I remember that vividly sitting under the basket, probably, you know, where I shouldn't have been but not doing my job sweeping the floor and just watching in amazement of uh, the, the women on the court and, and seeing it firsthand. And, you know, I, I obviously watched men play and boys play for a long time. And it was really then that I think I was like, wow, you know, I can do that. And I was kind of small and pudgy at the time. And, you know, Becky Hammond was a little bit back in the day too. So I just, I really remember watching her and those teams and uh, the Lady Rebels and, and being able to kind of be that close to have that, that close exposure um, changed my life and really, you know, planted the seed that um, basketball was, was something that I could do in college and uh, for a long time. So, um, it's it's obviously come full circle, which is the best part. Linda Froelich and Becky Hammond. I feel like I've heard of those names before. So. <laughs> Not bad. Um, all right, Sequoia, we'll, we'll go to you as uh, as well. Kind of take me through that that process for you too. Uh, <clears throat> kind of getting started uh, playing. I, I started a lot younger, um, about eight. You know, I was on a a team. Um, not growing up in the gym, you know, but uh, basketball kind of runs in the family. You know, my mom played, my uncles played, um, my dad's an athlete as well. But as a kid, um, it really kind of clicked for me um, watching my older sister play. You know, she was a three-sport athlete at a 
here in at Cheyenne and basketball wasn't her main sport. She was a volleyball player and then the track athlete, she was better at those two than basketball, but I would always be at her, all of her events. So an athlete, you know, kind of by nature, but, you know, I actually kind of started out with sports, you know, with my dad in a batting cage. Like I would try to, I wanted to play baseball. Uh, and so he would take me and I would, you know, hit at the batting cage and, you know, obviously back then, you know, softball wasn't as huge. Um, and I didn't really want to play softball at all anyway. I just liked hitting. Um, but it really started for me when I went out to play like Little League or whatever it's called these days. And I went to get a pop fly and uh, the ball got in the glare of the sun and it popped me right in the eye. Last day I ever played baseball at all. Um, and so I was like, I got to figure out something else because I'm running around all the time. Like, and so it became basketball. And then um, it just kind of snowballed from there. Uh, I haven't still to this day, I haven't stopped playing or doing <laughs> so. No, that, that's, uh, that's fantastic. Yeah, I appreciate you sharing that. We all have some sort of memory like that. Just, you know, do we, you know, we, we might get embarrassed, but I appreciate I'm you. My are this big, my oh. eye, man, it was worse. It was, I, I was like, no, there's no way I'm playing this <laughs> at all. Uh, it's not what you want. Um, we also do have another question for you, uh, Sequoia. So we'll get right to that again. If you want to ask any of our, uh, our, our panelists, this is our, our growing up in a basketball town panel here as part of our a Lady Rebel caravan. Um, this again for you, Sequoia, this coming from Kerry. So he prefaces this question by, by saying how the WNBA is such a wonderful and crazy difficult league to get into, but international play is where you really have a, a better chance at times to make a living playing professionally. So his question to you is, do you have a favorite story from international play throughout your career? Oh, Carrie, what's up, Carrie? Good question. Uh, miss you, I'm gonna have to come. I'm gonna have to get with you. But um, internationally, um, I would have to say, um, yeah. I mean, I played Euro Cup one year um, where you, you know, kind of travel, <clears throat> play internationally. My team in, in Slovakia made it all the way to the final four of the Euro, uh, Euro Cup basketball. And we were like a really small market, small team, weren't even supposed to be there. No one knew anyone's name on our team. Um, I might have been the most popular, which really wasn't because at the time I, I only played like for a year in the league. Um, so making it all the way there. And then just recently kind of getting to play with a close friend of mine, someone who I, who's a, a dear friend of, of Lindy. I got to play with Chelsea Hopkins, who's also a native, who's played pro. Um, in my 13th season, um, I had my best statistical year this year overseas. And that was, I, I credit a lot of that to her. Um, she's a point guard, so she made my job really, really easy. Um, Lenny, you know what it's like to play with Chelsea. Um, she's a, a great passer. So um, I, I just, you know, sat back and took my time and made a lot of shots and, and, and it was a good, it was a good time. No one said you can't get better with age, Koya. That's how it goes. I'm like I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm on some real live LeBron situation going on. It's it's, it's crazy because he's not like at all my favorite player at all, not even close. But it, our people are making that comparison a lot lately. It's irking me a little bit, honestly. I mean, if we're being real, there are worse people to be compared to. You can at least yeah, yeah, that, for sure. right? For sure. For sure. <laughs> well, so what you're thinking is you. I mean, we have. Some youngsters here on the panel with Jade and Desi. We've got, you know, Sikor, you, you're the seasoned vet. You might challenge them, a little one-on-one, -on -one, you know, Vegas Natives game at some point. Can we get that? I mean, you know, I'm, I'm never, I'm never uh, opposed to, you know, we call it running the ones these days. But, you know, I, I'm still out there. And Lenny and I just kind of talked about it a little bit. You know, them inviting me up to, to come to the open gyms. You know, I usually get an invitation. Me and make sure that I, that I stay in the loop. But... You know, I, I, I'm, the, I'm guessing maybe they heard about how good my season was overseas and they were like, nah, she ain't gonna come to our open gym and, and be trying to run the court because I, I hate losing. So, you know, I'm trying to run off 10, 10 12 games straight. We're, we're, uh, we're gonna blame it on COVID this past year, but uh, don't you worry this summer, you're gonna come and give them buckets because, uh, you know, you still got it. And they, they need to learn a little, a little bit from a vet. So re really show them that competitive fire. Yeah. As we all know, once it's put out there on Zoom, it's official. So, you know, Sequoia, you got you to gotta live up to the, to the promise now. I know they'll be, Jane Daisy will be looking forward to that, I'm sure. 
I mean, <laughs> y'all got a new teammate. Essence, she know what it's like to kind of take a bunch of ills um, in the open gym. So y'all just ask her about it. She's going to be like, man, Sequoia, I can't believe she told y'all that. You know what I'm saying? I bring, I bring, the, I bring them, my posse with me too, my uh, rest of the pros. Um, That'll be good. Give them, give them some good run and, and see what they, what, what they're up against and how hard they got to work to get there. I'd love that. Absolutely. All right, we uh, we'll we'll give you a break here from the, the heavy questioning, Sequoia. Um, we're going to switch. We have a question as well from uh, from Carrie for Mia here. Before we get to that, by the way, like I said, we're, we're giving out prizes this whole uh, this this whole uh, panel, and we do have Terry Edwards, our next winner, winning the UNLV Nike duffel and T-shirt. So congrats. Uh, to you as well, Terry and Eric, both, for both of you, UNLV Sports Marketing, they're going to get in touch with you, and uh, you'll you'll get those uh, prizes here shortly. And again, anybody else, if you want to get in on the, on the Q&A, just use that little function at the bottom of your Zoom screen as we've got about uh, 15 or so minutes to go. But we're going to go back at you, Mia. And Carrie remembers you, Mia, sitting in the stands at Lady Rebel Games before you were playing at UNLV back in the day. And, and the question to you, Mia, is did you ever think your journey from high school to college would then lead you to where you, you are now today? Gary, I knew, I knew a great question was coming from Carrie. I was just waiting for it. Um, that's a great question. I think I always hoped that it would. It was always in the back of my mind, you know, from since this time I was in high school, that once my playing career was over, um, that I would coach. And I always hoped that I would have that opportunity I don't think you can ever plan something as special as this to be able to coach at your alma mater, a place that you've given, you know, blood, sweat, and tears to. I don't think you could plan that out, but I've been fortunate and blessed to have this opportunity um, and I'm extremely thankful for it. So yeah, I definitely didn't see it going exactly this route, but it's something that I definitely prayed for, for sure. Yes, I can ask you, you Lindy, kind of a similar question too, because you mentioned, I mean, you're, you're a ball girl, you're what, like, seven, eight years old, just running around like crazy. And, and you, your, your dad's a coach and then you grow up a little bit, you're able to get out on the courts. You ever think like that same court that you were running around for, you know, not doing your job, as you said, not sweeping the courts, just watching. Do you ever think that would be a coach or, or a, a court where someday you would then be sitting there as a coach, actually coaching the players that you used to watch grow up and uh, kind of idolize like you talked about earlier? Um, I think at the time I was just focused on trying to get there to be playing. So, uh, you know, not necessarily coaching, but it, it's been really special. And, you know, once I kind of really started playing and, and loving the game and, and learning and studying it, I, I did know I wanted to coach. And then, you know, obviously you kind of have aspirations to to start at the top and, and really go as high as you can go in the college level. and you know, a place like UNLV has always been really a dream job. Um, and so it, it's it's surreal still, you know, some, I, I walk out uh, at the tunnel, especially in the Thomas and Mac and even on the Cox, I kind of look around and I'm like, wow, we're really doing this. So um, it, it's really exciting. Um, and it's just such a special opportunity. I think that's why, um, you know, it, hopefully, you know, people can understand it maybe means a little bit more to me. It's not just a job. There's, there's, you know, the honor and privilege to represent our town, our community. Um, and so that, that adds a little pressure. I'm not going to lie, but I, it's good pressure because I, you know, I know what this place deserves and, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to give everything that I've got to, to get us there. Um, so it's, it's definitely a privilege, but when I was little, I was just kind of probably worried about playing more so than like where I would be after I was playing. <laughs> that's, that's probably a good point. That's, that's a fair statement uh, to make. Uh, we do have another question coming in from Matthew. Unfortunately, Lindy, this does not include you. So don't, don't feel too left out. This is for everybody besides me, because Lindy, you're the only one on the panel who did not actually play at UNLV, even though you're, you're obviously now coaching uh, the Lady Rebs. So Matthew asks, and I'll start. Uh, with you, Desi, what was your main motivation for deciding to play at UNLV? Um, well, before Coach Lindy had came on, um, Coach KO, she was really, she was really hyping my head up. I would say, you know, she was calling me a rebounding machine. She was like, "You're so fierce," and just just knowing that she really wanted me to come to UNLV and really play for her, and I knew that I had a, a spot there. That's what really pushed me to come to UNLV. And that's you were just named Mountain West Freshman of the Year, so something clearly worked. 
after one season so far in Vegas. How about you, Jade? I know there, there was a sister element uh, involved there, but I, I wonder if that's the direction you're going to go here. But what was your main motivation for wanting to come to UNLV? That was definitely one of my directions because having someone that, like, you know is, like, a comfort person is, like, obviously, like, a motivation to go there because me and her do get along. So that was one motivation. And then my other was the major for sure because – I'm in um, journalism and media, and we have a great program here at UNLV, so I was very excited about that. Also basketball, but the major was a very strong um, pull factor. All right, journalism, you could—you should have just hosted this thing. They don't need me here. I mean, come on, Jay. Bury the lead on this. Uh, sure. No, that's uh, Ben. Don't worry. Okay, sounds that, that's good. That's good. Uh, thank you, Lindy. That, that's good to know. Um, all right, Mia, how about how about you going back to thinking through your your high school process and, and how you ended up uh, deciding UNLV? Um, I had many reasons. Um, I mean, the community itself, I had so many people here, you know, helped me through a lot of tough times. Um, and I felt the love from people that, you know, obviously my family, that was it. It was huge to be able to have the opportunity to play in front of them right down the street. My grandma to be able to come to every game, which she did, and she had all her little her her friends in the season ticket holder seats um, watching. But um, the community, you know, they they backed me, they supported me when I was at Durango. Um, they continued to support me when I came here to UNLV. And then along with that, I think just making it an option for other players in town to want to stay home and know that you can stay home. You can stay here. You can be successful. Um, and, you know, you can have a great career and a great experience. So, you know, every time, every chance I got to get back into the community while I was here to do community service and talk about um, just my experience here, I definitely did that because I wanted other great players like Desi, like Jade to have the opportunity to stay here and that know that this was an option. They didn't have to, you know, leave home to have a great experience. And then for you, Sequoia, I'm sure uh, with a player like you, you had so many high school accolades and everything and, and lots of, uh, you know, you had attention. I'm sure it's always interesting. Do you, do you try and spread your wings, leave, or, or do you stay home? How did you decide to end up staying here and, and playing for your hometown school? Well, pretty, pretty ironic uh, story. I, I didn't want to stay home initially. Um, I wanted, you know, my dream school was LSU. I had interest from them for track. Um, uh, and I was going to think about, you know, maybe walking on, going to, on a track scholarship, walking on in basketball. But then I, you know, evaluated what was really going on over there. And they had, you know, Simone Augustus and, and all these people. And I looked at the depth chart like, man, you're going to be not playing for at least three years. Like, let's, you know, re recalculate that. And then you're also a walk on, you know, a track athlete. So, nah, you know, and, and then at that time, you know, uh, Coach Miller was my coach, Regina. And she would come to all my games and um, at, at, at Mojave. And, you know, there was some, you know, other schools that, you know, really showed some interest. But, you know, I, it was really a prayer for me. You know, the day before the National Letter of Intent Day, signing day uh, for us, I, you know, I just went on an official visit two days before that. Um, unofficial visit, actually. I didn't take any other visits. I just took one unofficial visit to UNLV. I drove up there. Um, and the coaching staff, I really fell in love with Coach Fro. It was Frozina Jira at the time, Anthony and uh, Melody um, and Coach Miller. Uh, I fell in love with the challenge that I felt like I was getting from that staff. You know, they basically told me, coming from me having a huge head, um, a crazy, you know, uh, you know, personality as a as a as a youth, I would say um, that you know I wasn't gonna play. You know, I was there was. Uh, three uh, All-Americans, Kodak at the time, Kodak All-Americans uh, on that team, a McCracken sister, Randy Henry, that I, I wasn't going to play. There was no room for me on this, really. I was going to be a freshman and take the, you know, traditional route. And I was like, is she crazy? Like, there's no way I'm not going to play. Like, she got to be out of her mind. No, you know. So I came for a workout and she was like, yeah, you're not going to play. You can't really shoot. And I was just like, okay, I got to come here because I need to tell – this lady needs to know, like, why is she coming to all my games talking about I ain't going to play? Like, that's just ridiculous. But, you know, I just really felt challenged, fell in love with the staff, and I knew that they were going to push me to be the best basketball player that I could be. So that, you know, in turn, the next day after a prayer, I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm stay home and represent the city. But to what Nia, to what Mia said, sorry, um, you know, I, I did once I made that decision, I made it a, a, a huge um, – 
ideal for me to to make sure that other players that came behind me could would know that it's okay to stay home and play. You know what I'm saying? If you're if you're good enough, why not represent where you grew up? You know, and let's start to build some tradition in that arena. I was actually quoted in the in review journal review journal saying that everybody needs to know that Vegas does doesn't just have scrubs. Um, I got I, I later got you know a, a big lesson in 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 PC and 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 knowing how to talk to the media, but I stood behind that though. I meant that I didn't come out right, but I meant that 100. percent and uh, so, yeah, that, that, that's kind of how, how that happened. I sense a theme, Sequoia, as far as you just giving, giving your coaches the business. I mean, that's, it seems like we've got a pattern developing here. Yeah, you know, it's, it's something about, you know, somebody telling me I can't do something, you know, that, that kind of turns, turns into something bigger than I expected it to be for the most part. But um, I, I, think, I think so. Uh, just, just being challenged is something that I thrive on. For sure. And we've got one more uh, question for you, Sequoia. First, though, we've got a big, probably this is like the premier prize to be given out, and that is our Lady Rebel jersey that we have. And we can now announce Mackenzie Chirac. You are a winner of the Lady Rebel jersey. That is a, is a big, that is a highly priced, highly sought after gift. So congrats to uh, Mackenzie for winning that. That leads us into uh, our one of our final questions here for Sequoia. Just a couple minutes left as we'll, we'll try to get into as many, uh, many of these as we can. So for you, Sequoia, having played internationally for so many years and, and kind of traveling the world playing, playing basketball, how many former Lady Rebel uh, players do you remember playing against in the international game? Oh, wow. Uh, playing against – well, I played against Constance, Constance Jinx. Um, which is one of, you know, uh, probably in the conversation of all time greats. Um, she's one that I watched coming up like, man, she played like she was from Chicago as well, war number 23. I'm like, man, she can who? Like, I like, I liked her. So I played against Constance. Uh, didn't really get to, I was too young, I think, to catch Linda overseas, but I watched, you know, um, some of hers. Uh, shoot. <sighs> Sheena Moore played against Sheena. She played overseas a little bit. Um, I can't. So it, it had to be three. I might be missing somebody. Might be missing somebody. Lady Rebels, former Lady Rebels, not, you know. And Brooke and I was in training camp together with the Aces. So there you go. You, you comb through the memory. You, you know, yeah. you it all out. Wow. Wow. Oh, all, all good. I uh, uh, appreciate it. All right. Uh, Lindy, as we're kind of running out of uh, the end of, of our time here again, we want to thank everybody for, for hanging out with us. This has been just an awesome panel, sharing some stories about what it's been like for all of you guys growing up here in a basketball town as great as Las Vegas. Lindy, kind of looking ahead now, we've sort of talked all about the past and some of all of your, your guys' memories. You're coming off just a, a fantastic season in your first year as the UNLV head coach. Let's look ahead to, to next year. What are uh, what have been some of the off-season plans here? And, and what are you uh, expecting as far as this 2021-22 season that it seems like, before we know, it's going to be right on our doorstep? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Ben, for uh, moderating here for us. Appreciate it. Um, and everyone that's tuning in. And of course, uh, these ladies alongside being sharing their time with us, Jade and Desi and Sequoia and Mia. So thank you for joining us for this uh, awesome conversation. Um, we, we've had an exciting off season. Uh, you know, obviously we, we all kind of feel like we're coming out of, of COVID a little bit, which, which kind of just helps, um, you know, try to feel like we're getting back to some normalcy. We had a great month, like an outstanding month of workouts um, with our team in, in April, uh, just four weeks of, of work and the improvement that we saw in four weeks, like, you know, has me itching to get them back in the gym, but we're giving them um, some downtime, you know, well-deserved uh, so they can kind of regroup and, and finish up their studies and everything. Um, we've added, you know, Sequoia touched on it. We've added uh, a couple of transfers, um, at another local product, um, Essence Booker's played at Spring Valley. Um, we're super excited to add her to our, to our bunch. Um, we've got another transfer from Youngstown State, um, and so we're we're getting our roster set. We have five uh, incoming freshmen who are eager and excited to uh, join our veteran group. 
uh, I say veteran, but, but we're still pretty young uh, and we're going to be a lot of new faces next year, but we got a ton of experience. Jade and Desi here, um, you know, they finished their freshman year and now I'm like, I'm going to expect them to, to play like seniors next year with how much they played this year. So really excited about the leadership that we have, our returners, Delaney, Kiana, um, Nia, obviously an all conference player. Uh, you know, we're, we're excited with the direction that we're going. Um, we have Justice back, Justice Etheridge, another Centennial product. Um, we have her back. So, uh, you know, we, we did some awesome things in year one, you know, and I'm not even kind of, you know, I've had some time to reflect and, and really be proud of, of what we did. But if anything now, you know, I'm eager, like now we set the bar. Um, and that's honestly going to be our, our foundation and, and we are going to continue to raise it, set our expectation. Um, and, and we're going for championships and, and there is absolutely no reason um, that it cannot happen this year. We have the talent, uh, we have the leadership, we have an amazing coaching staff, we have a great support staff, we have great leadership from our department and the resources and giving us all that we need. Um, so, we're, you know, we're not just going to like go for, uh, you know, ground balls here. We're, we're going for home runs and that's what we're going to expect because we're going to work our tail off um, and, and put in the work and the results will take care of themselves. So we're really excited. Um, we're kind of itching, I think, to get back together, but uh, it's been it's been a long year and, you know, we really missed having our fans. And so our season tickets went on sale. So please go check them out. You know, tickets.com. I mean, a season ticket, you know, for all of our games, I'm going to tell you it's less than 100 bucks and people are giving away 100 bucks on the street like it's going out of style. So uh, come support us. It's a big deal. We want to pack the Cox. It holds you know, just under 3000 and, and we got to have games with 2,500 people in there because I'm like, let's get over to the big gym and play all of our games in the Thomas and Mac. So um, we're excited. Our, our schedule will come out here soon, uh, probably in the next month. So um, it, it, it's going to be an exciting year. And I keep telling everyone, you got to jump on before the bandwagon is full um, because it's already getting there. And um, we're really excited and it's just, it, it, it's just getting going. Um, and so I appreciate everyone kind of being on here today, uh, sharing their time with us, but UNLV tickets, get your season tickets. We got unlvgear.com that just fired up, get you some gear. Um, we'll get some Lady Rebel exclusive on there. Um, but yeah, that's what I got. Thanks, Ben. Love it. You, you are correct, Lindsay. 75 bucks is where season tickets start at. Again, That's a you know, deal. That's the best deal in town. I'm like, and for the product that we got, you better come on. Even if you have some money to spare, if you spend your hundred bucks, go to your, you know, get your Lady Rebel exclusive gear. I like it. Uh, again, you can call 702-739-FANS. Again, want to thank all of you for joining us. Just sincerely, it's been a uh, Great to have so much participation here today, as well as our panelists for joining us. Jay Thomas, Desi Young, Mia Bell, Sequoia Holmes, and of course, of course the uh, coach of the Lady Rebs in Lindy LaRock. I want to thank you all for joining us today. We, as Lindy mentioned, cannot wait to see you for the 2021-22 20, season. I'm tired. I keep talking to the cardboard cutouts and they don't answer, so I'm looking forward to actually seeing you, the fans, in person next year. Uh, that'll do it. This has been our latest uh, Lady Rebel caravan events growing up in a basketball town. Thanks so much, and we can't wait to uh, see you all here shortly. Thank you. We'll see you soon. Thanks for having me.